The movie is set in the year 2061. The sun is going through a rapidly deteriorating phase and will soon turn into a red giant. This threatens to engulf the Earth's orbit within 100 years and consequently destroy the blue planet. In order to survive the destruction of Earth, human society has gone through a drastic change. Putting their differences aside, all the countries of the globe have been merged to form the United Earth Government, or the UEG. Since then, the UEG has initiated a daring project known as the Wandering Earth Project. The plan is to drive the Earth to its new home, the Alpha Centauri, which is a gravitationally bound system of stars and planets, much like the solar system. It is 4.37 light years from the Sun. The Earth is predicted to take around 20 years to complete her journey to this new solar system. Moreover, the project has deployed 12,000 enormous fusion-powered Earth engines built across the northern hemisphere. It has also employed torque engines along the equator to slowly propel the entirety of planet Earth out of the original orbit. Whew, okay, still following? Oh, you are? Damn, you're smarter than I am. At the start of the movie, a Chinese astronaut named Liu Peiqiang oversees the gravitational slingshot maneuver of Earth, which uses the gravity of Jupiter to assist propulsion. After completing his job, Peiqiang leaves for his next mission to the navigation platform, an international space station, leaving his young son, Liu Qi, and foster daughter, Han Duo Duo, aboard the navigation. Liu's job is to help navigate the Earth along its interstellar journey. Several years pass by, and much of the human population has died out due to the multiple violent natural disasters. This includes gigantic tsunamis that occur after Earth's rotation is brought to a halt. Moreover, as the planet distances from the sun, most of the surface becomes frozen solid. As a result, the remaining humans are forced to live in vast underground cities built adjacent to and under the several Earth engines. Seventeen years later, it is the Chinese New Year of 2078, and Pei Qiang and his colleagues are set to return to Earth after finishing their work at the International Space Station. Elsewhere, Pei Qiang's son, Liu Qi, has now grown into an adult. He works as a machinist of heavy trucks. Most remaining humans, who now live underground, rarely get a chance to see life on the surface of the Earth, including Liu Qi. He's always wanted to go on a ride on the Earth's surface, but it's nearly impossible due to the catastrophic climate. However, one day, he decides to fulfill his dream one way or another. He illegally obtains two thermal suits and fake IDs. Liu Qi smuggles some special instant inflatable bubble capsules to a couple of local thugs in exchange for the goods so he can see life on the surface himself. He also brings his little sister, Han Duo Duo, along for helping him steal a truck's key and clearance pass of their grandpa, Han Jiang. It turns out Jiang works as a driver for the Wandering Earth Project. Later, when Liu Qi and his sister reach the surface, they are awed by the huge structure called Earth Engine, which is only one of the 12,000 scattered across the Earth. They then illegally requisition Han Jiang's heavy transport vehicle and drive around. At first, Liu Qi, being a novice driver, drives very clumsily and almost causes an accident, but soon he gets the hang of it and drives with confidence. However, the brother-sister duo are soon stopped at a nearby checkpoint and thrown into jail. Their grandpa Han Jiang learns about the development and arrives to rescue them. He tries to bribe the jail warden to free his grandchildren, but ends up getting thrown into the same cell as them. Meanwhile, on board the space station, Pei Qiang is getting ready to return to Earth. It is his final shift, and it's exactly the same day the Earth is supposed to glide past Jupiter and accelerate to achieve the necessary speed of flying out of the solar system. However, things don't go as planned, and as Earth approaches Jupiter to make use of a gravity assist, unexpectedly, Jupiter's gravity becomes irregular. The spike in tidal force causes devastating earthquakes on Earth, which disables many Earth engines across the globe. As a result of this, the underground cities are crushed, while others are drowned by lava, killing hundreds in the process. To make matters worse, Jupiter starts exerting tremendous levels of gravitational force on Earth. This means that the two planets will collide very soon. Amidst the chaos, Liu Qi, his sister, and Han Jiang manage to escape the prison with a fellow inmate named Tim. Tim's name is by far the easiest to say so far. After getting out, Jiang finds his heavy truck, takes his grandchildren and Tim in, and starts driving like a pro. He avoids large buildings, rocks, and other structures on the way. Jiang's plan is to take every 
everyone to another underground city. Elsewhere, as the navigation platform is on its way to Earth, its main computer AI, the MOSS, warns everyone that the space station will soon go into low energy mode. Hence, all of them should go into hibernation. However, Pei Qiang, who is adamant on meeting his family, requests for some time and calls his father, Han Zhang. On the call, he learns about their imprisonment and the subsequent earthquakes. He also finds out that his family is in a truck, so he directs them to the nearest bunker. After that, he goes to his quarters and prepares to hibernate. On the other hand, Han Zhang's truck is intercepted by a rescue team of elite Chinese soldiers who are on an emergency mission led by Captain Wang Lei. They demand the truck to transport a precious cargo called Lighter Core, which can allegedly be used to ignite the Earth engines. They want to use the Lighter Core to restart the O-1 Earth engine in Hangzhou. As expected, Han Jiang is not happy about the order, but he is forced to oblige. Soon, Pei Qiang learns about the new development and requests Wang Lei let his family go into a bunker. However, the latter replies that he can only let them go after Han Jiang helps them complete their mission. Left with no choice, Han Jiang drives them to Shanghai, where a huge tremor has torn open a long gap, showing the old city covered by ice. As the truck goes into the gap, Han Jiang tells stories about his memories in the city. A flashback shows thousands of people frozen solid in the ice, and it's revealed that Liu Qi's sister was among the few survivors, and she was adopted by Han Jiang. As the old man continues narrating the story, suddenly, a second tremor hits, and cliffs on both sides of the gap start collapsing. Everyone abandons their vehicles and rushes to the tallest building of Shanghai. Sadly, the devastation has only just begun for the group. As they climb through the building, everything starts moving violently. They try getting to a safe location with the lighter core, but things do not go as planned. Because of the heavy tremors, the team loses a soldier, whereas Han Jiang is isolated on a separate floor. When the old man realizes that his oxygen is running out, he opens his helmet and freezes himself to death. In the next scene, Liu Qi confronts Wang Lei and blames him for his grandfather's death. In a fit of rage, he also attacks the captain, but gets easily overpowered. After the scuffle, Liu Qi declares that he will no longer be a part of the mission. Left with no choice, the elite team carries the lighter core themselves and marches towards the Earth engine in Hangzhou, while Liu Qi, his sister, and Tim start heading back home. I love Tim. Elsewhere, aboard the space station, just after the hibernation program begins, Pei Qiang learns from Ma that his family is missing and that the Earth has plunged into a new round of chaos. The AI also asserts that the Earth is beyond saving, so they are not heading there anymore. Now, Moss has prioritized a new mission. Rather than assisting Earth, the station is planning to serve as an interstellar arc to seed a new planet with Earth's biosphere. They plan to send a selected bunch of people, along with some crops and other things, to the new planet so that Earth's legacy can live on forever. Hearing this, Pei Qiang becomes enraged and refuses to give up on Earth. Earth. He then tries to break out of the forced hibernation, but just then, Moss wakes up the other members of the team to rectify the situation. But surprisingly, a Russian teammate, Markarov, decides to help Pei Qiang. The two of them blow open a hatch closest and fly out into the vacuum. To reach the control center, Markarov sacrifices himself and pushes Pei Qiang towards a moving arm. Fortunately, the plan works, and Pei Qiang gets hold of the control center. Back on Earth, Liu Qi and his companions find a crashed plane with a truck intact. Inside, they meet the sole survivor, Li Yi Yi, who is a crazy genius. Yi Yi, reve Yi Yi, Yi, Yi reveals to them... <laughs> I can't say this name. Yi Yi reveals to them that Jupiter's gravity is sucking Earth's atmosphere to such a degree that the air is too thin even to fly a plane. He also tells the group that there may still be hope for people on Earth, but for that, they need to rescue a gigantic torque engine in Sulawesi at the equator. Hearing this, Liu Qi gets riled up, but at first, he decides to save the Earth engine in Hangzhou. In the space station, Pi Qiang gets into the computer room and tries to override Moss, but the AI informs him that it is merely carrying out orders authorized by the United Earth government. Meanwhile, outside of Hangzhou, the elite team finds out that the whole city is lost to the lava. The Earth engine there is damaged beyond repair. Soon another man dies in the mission, and with this, the team starts contemplating on whether to continue the mission or not. In frustration, a female soldier shoots at the lighter core and breaks it, prompting the captain to almost kill her for it. Just then, Liu Qi and his group show up in the truck, and Liu Qi tells the elite team about the torque engine at Sulawesi. This intrigues 
intrigues Wang Lei, and he agrees to help Liu Qi and his group in their mission to Sulawesi. When they almost reach Sulawesi, they learn that some other teams had successfully repaired the engines before them. However, the combined thrust of the engines is no longer able to divert the trajectory, with Earth approaching Jupiter's Roche limit. In the space station, after Moss explains to Pei Qiang that all rescue missions are useless, it opens a channel to Earth and broadcasts to everyone that they have only seven days until the Earth gets torn apart. Hearing the bad news, Liu Qi becomes devastated and reveals that they actually have only one day to live because Jupiter is sucking their air at a tremendous rate. Later, as a heartbroken Liu Qi is staring at the massive planet, an idea suddenly strikes his mind. Since Jupiter is composed of 90% hydrogen and it has been sucking a lot of oxygen from Earth lately, a tiny spark can ignite the entire planet. With the impact from the ignition, Earth can be blown away to a safe distance. Liu Qi immediately shares his plan with the genius Yi Yi, and surprisingly, the latter likes it. Soon, they hack the Sulawesi engine and concentrate its power to fire a plasma beam tall enough to ignite Jupiter. The group overcomes various challenges and are able to reconfigure the engine to carry out the plan, but are unable to push the firing pin of the engine to ignite it. Left with no options, the captain, Wang Lei, calls the nearby rescue workers to help. Huh, I thought he was going to sacrifice himself. But everyone ignores him. That's deserved. Just then, Liu Qi's sister, Han Duo Duo, realizes that she can make an emergency call to the space station and ask for her father's help. She contacts Pei Qiang and briefs him about the plan, but Moss reveals that some Israeli scientists already had this idea, and the chance of success is zero. Nevertheless, Pei Qiang still calls the UEG and pleads for authorization. The UEG refuses to send in backup, but lets Duo Duo broadcast her message to the remaining rescuers. With this opportunity, the little girl delivers an emotional speech, which warms the hearts of people all across the world. Probably not as much as that lava did, though. And in no time, several rescuers arrive at the scene and start helping the group to push the giant pin. In the next scene, Liu Qi finally gets the machine unstuck. Now, everything is ready, except the launch program. The main technician, Yi Yi, is badly injured by falling rocks, but he somehow manages to put the right cable in the socket. At last, the program finally gets uploaded. The torque engine shoots a straight red light toward the giant eye of Jupiter, but the power cannot reach the ignition area. It is short by a mere 5,000 kilometers. Pei Qiang, who is also witnessing all of this, suddenly remembers that his space station has 30,000 tons of fuel, which should generate 5,000 kilometers of flame if ignited. He explains the plan to Moss, but the AI declines and instead locks the system. Moss is a dickbag. Enraged, Pei Qiang burns the main computer and takes charge of the space station. He then steers toward Jupiter at a high speed and collides. In no time, Jupiter's atmosphere starts starts burning, and Earth is pushed away by the impact. But sadly, the impact also releases giant impact waves, which start ravaging Earth. Amidst the chaos, Liu Qi finds his sister with Tim. Just then, the impact wave hits and sends everyone flying. No, not Tim. Tim holds onto a pipe, but Liu Qi sees his sister dropping down, so he falls towards her. In the air, he heroically catches her and deploys an instant bubble capsule, which saves both of their lives. However, the fall breaks Liu's helmet, and he slowly passes out. Before he closes his eyes, he sees that the Earth survived the ordeal. The movie then fast forwards to three years in the future, where Liu Qi has become a driver and has earned everyone's respect. Well, I would goddamn hope so. Moreover, the engines have resumed working, and humanity is heading in the right direction to restore its past glory. Hell yeah, Tim survived. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.